be so roasty and toasty that me and Jay just gave each other the check in the back. And we just started <laughs> laughing immediately because we're like, wow, we're kind of baked already. Oh, man. But we're roasty and toasty and ready to roasty with you. I'm Sunny D. <laughs> and I'm Captain Jay. And we're, we're the, the Pot Smoking Moms. Moms. Hey, we just had a really great pre sesh with our patrons. We we're just smoking. We we're like, oh, we got to watch what if we don't smoke too much because we got a show to record afterwards. <laughs> But we made it. We're glad you're here. If you like the show, do us a solid rate, subscribe, share, hit the like button, smoke a J in our names. Uh, uh, follow us on all social medias, potsmokingmoms.com, the website. We're still paying for it. It's still up there. So you might as well check it out because <laughs> we haven't checked it out in a minute. <laughs> Let us know what's happening there. That would be great. <laughs> Um, yo, totally I don't think we need to prepared for this. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we have to smoke anymore right now. But we got a smoke sesh coming up again. Yeah, usually I'm like so ready. To I'm, smoke. I, I'm I'm ready, <laughs> and I'm so unprepared this time. It's okay. We, I smoked all my shit with our patrons before. I know. I, I I got the I got it ready. What do you got? What do you have? So I had some um, delivery from Rise again. I tried to get delivery, but the, I'm outside the delivery zone. Oh it's so God. sad. That stinks. That stinks. Hylia, I say. Hylia needs to get with it. Hylia needs to get with it and allow dispensary for reals. Because. Oh. Let me tell you, and it's same day delivery too. Yeah. I and know. since I work from home now, <laughs> I'm here all the time. Well, I've never left. I rarely leave my house actually anymore. But, anyways, <laughs> the strain I got is one of my favorites from Rise. I smoke it a lot. I don't know that if I've, I might have smoked it on the show before. It's called Animal Face. Which is a pretty. I got that last time I was there. And it's stinky. It smells so great. Uh, I love it. I last couple of ones I got from Rise have been great. I feel like every time I get a Star Wars strain, that's always solid too. So I usually recommend people smoke Skywalker. But Boba Fett is the last one I got from Rise, which is also very good. Mm-hmm. You got something that's like the cannabis cup it's winner. It's Pleasure. Pleasures. From our homie Pleasure. at Miami High Life. It's supposedly, you said what? The recent uh, cannabis, cannabis cup, cup winner. winner. Mm hmm. 2023, I guess, Cannabis Cup. Well, it's still 2023, <laughs> technically. So I would imagine if it was this year's <laughs> cup winner, then that's what it is. Well, it is really good. I really like it. Chip, right you on. guys, smoke it up. We uh, cheers. I was so high, I forgot I did pack a bowl. Oh, my God. <laughs> guys, I don't know that this is a good idea, but here we go anyways. Here we go. Took a little hit. Save some room for later. Yeah. I'll hit it again later in the show. <clears throat> so I had to put this in there because the last episode, <laughs> we talked about it. So just the update that Snoop tricked us all. Yeah. Well, we all knew that it was going to be some sort of advertisement. Yeah, we assumed something. edibles or something. You know, you can't be making big um, no announcements like that. A on fucking... Yeah, fire but pit, smokeless fire pit. We were all like, which is actually like, oh a my God. really cool device. It's really cool, but it was just like, I mean, I get it. Genius marketing. I got to give it to them. Yeah. That was really good, and that's probably why he did it because he was like, oh, people ain't gonna expect this, and then you know, <laughs> boom, this. Oh my God, it was great. It was, that was great. good, but whatever. It's advertising. I feel like everything's an advertisement now. So yeah, you know, yeah. So I apologize if I'm a little bit. <laughs> no, don't apologize. Slow this, this episode. You're not. You're not that slow. So you're good. You may might did. feel it, but it's not. It's not coming all across that way. We decided that we wanted to go out last night, my husband and I, for a friend's birthday, and it was to Winwood. Which is a very, you know, nice Hip. happening. I mean, area look, like, of let's Miami. be honest. We used to party in Winwood all the time, all the time, and we I, were young and full of energy and vibrant. Yeah, you know, and we still are those things, but it just doesn't last as long as it used to. Exactly. So, so I feel you. I went out to a great show with some great friends. I had a great time, but I quickly realized I am ready to go home. And it was not even like close to midnight yet. I think it was like ten. Oh my thirty god, I know. And I'm I like, feel okay. You, I think I'm ready to go. (laughs) If I can manage to get out of the house by eight, my God, by 10, I'm like, oh, this is done, right? We're going home. We got home around midnight. 
it was, it was exhausting. And then I took like uh, my friend. Had At midnight's a, a decent time to get home. Right. I feel that's reasonable. <laughs> I know with our age. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm over 40 now. I'm yeah. not going to be out. To the wee hours. Right. <laughs> 3 a.m. Girl, I used to come back and the sun was coming up. And you feel like Hollywood vampire, you know, like your skin's about to melt off. Yeah, no, I was good. Yeah. I was ready to go. Can't do that no but more. But it was quite a mission to get there because we decided, okay, it's Wynwood. It's Art Basel week. We need to yeah, not drive right. there because it's going to be impossible to get parking, yeah. all that. So we Ubered there and Ubered back. Trying to get an Uber to leave. Felt impossible. First of all, I was shrooming way too much and I had to completely rely on Johnny. I was like, here, you figure this out because I cannot book an Uber right Good now. luck. Uh, <laughs> men in charge, good luck. And then it was just so hard to get through no, get but a connection. No, but I can vouch for that. Yeah, and to me, We've I didn't understand it because I was there shrooming before. and I never go out. I'm like, what is that? Yeah, and then you guys miscalculated your dose. Yes. <laughs> so my friend's like, yeah, we we're trying to, f-. he had this bar of chocolate and he was like, each piece, we we're trying to figure out how much each piece was. Totally mathed it wrong. We thought we were eating 0.2 per block and it turned out to be 0. 0.5. Double and a little more. <laughs> Not just more. It was just like double what we thought it was. was what we so, planned for. It was so much fun, but it was just more than I expected. You know what I mean? And just being out in like so much commotion, I was overstimulated yeah, a lot that, that when we were like is... walking around Wynwood. Mm-hmm. And when we got to Smorgasbord, I was like, this is like such a cool thing that I would normally really like to be at. But right now in this level You're of state, claustrophobic I felt and paranoid and stuff. just overwhelmed with the people and then all the sounds and all the smells because of all the different food oh, coming from all the yeah. vendors, even though they all smell delicious. And I was like, I'm hungry, but I don't want to eat right now. Like, Yeah, I don't. I am hungry, <laughs> but it's too, eating is too complicated right now. You got to make the line. That's my whole thing when I'm people. out there. Like, I got to make the line. I got to be around the people in the line. So, you know. Wait for the they food. Got, they got in line for a churro and they ordered the churro. And while they were waiting for the churro to be made, she went and made the other line to another vendor across and got something. Hell and yeah, that's she, smart. When it was available. That's and a strategy. <laughs> and what? When it was done and she and the food vendor gave it to Chris and Chris brought it over. He's like holding it. And she's like, what's that? And he's like, whatever the fuck you ordered from here. I, I don't that. know what that is. I don't think that's what I ordered. Oh, no. It wasn't they, what she ordered? It was I not? No. Oh. I don't know. But they were like inspecting. And then in the end, they decided it was like delicious. And they didn't oh, okay. it all. all right, right, but, right. Like, that's a hilarious scenario, though. But the, the churro, she got the churro too? so hard. Yes, she got the churro too. I was laughing so hard, I almost peed myself. Yeah, it would have been. That was a really like, funny situation. Like, and when he's like, like, she's like, what is that? that? And he's like, whatever the fuck well, you Whatever ordered. you ordered. I don't know what that is. I, yeah. And then them inspecting it and then going, all right, we're going to eat it and try it out. Oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> I was just lo- losing it laughing. It was a way bigger dose That's than expected. Fun. So like weird sleep when I got home. Didn't get proper sleep. Hey, you sleep. know what, though? I gotta say, no bad sleep for one night for fun like that. It eh. was well worth it. Yeah, well worth it. It was worth so it. worth it. Yeah. It was a great night. Yeah. And I just... One for the I books. had to tap out early. I was the first in the group and to that, tap out. And it's just because it's like life is exhausting. <laughs> existing in the space that we are existing. Even, look, even working from home, bro, because I'm like, wow, how was I doing this? How was I not doing this before? How was I existing every day? Boop, 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 around. I have humans, all of them around me for multiple hours. Multiple hours? My mind cannot wrap itself around that. So, yeah, peopling <laughs> is very hard and very overwhelming. <laughs> Especially like, I, I, look, we have a friend, our friend Snacks and Things, she's doing, she was doing Turp Basil. That's huge. Dab Day has a huge thing out tonight. for Art Basil. That's tonight. I don't know, because I'm not going. Just because like, again. Oh, and then uh, my husband was supposed to go see Action Bronson. His his um his friend invited That's him to go see. That's what they call see Action. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. she's just like, we're going yeah. here. Let's go here. Here, 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 here. She makes the plans. And hey, man, listen, I love bitches that are about it hence why i do the podcast with who i do the podcast with because they're like i don't want or what nobody has details who cares let's do it okay and then with the happens mm-hmm. you know so i love that shit 
Um, but he was supposed to go see Action Bronson, and he, you know, had told him like, "Oh, I've been sick. I, I'm not gonna go." He canceled, and then I was like, "Oh, that's a good concert." And then I was like, "Where? Where is it?" <laughs> he was like, "Oh, it's at the band show over in Miami Beach, the band show." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, well, I would have been, been like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna go. Sorry." You're like, "No, I'm good." Miami's like, I don't know. I love it sometimes, but I really have to want to do it. But when I do it, I'm glad I did, you know, because it's the people who we go there This with. morning, my eyes are puffy. But You're recovering. I'm here. Recovering from a good time. Great time. <laughs> How about you? What's going on? Oh, I'm recovering, too. It yeah, was a great time. <laughs> yeah, I had the COVIDs. And For the first time, y'all. Yeah, I mean, I got a pretty good streak, right? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Cheers to that. <laughs> Finally got that. That was great. It was pretty awful. Um, <laughs> we got it. Funny enough, we got it from the wedding that we went to. My my nephew got uh, married on Black Friday uh, at Rusty Pelican. It was really nice. It was a beautiful wedding with some of my favorite people in the world with some good food. Mm. And the girls did the flower girl thing and they fucking knocked it out of the park. They too, Sid was knocked out like she was sleeping. How'd they do with the flower girl thing? But they did really good. It was very, you know, intimate. It was a small, it was very, I, they you know what? Scattered the petals. Yeah, they did the petals. They did yeah. it. They pulled it off and they were up there being cute with my niece and stuff. And the speeches that the groom and the bride made were beautiful. Everybody cried. Uh, I was about to. It was really <laughs> I was cute. About I was to. about to. Um, And then I was just like about talking to. to Someone else at the table going like, yeah, we did not write our vows because we did. We, I would have been crying <laughs> the whole time I'm reading them and <laughs> turn into a mess in front of everybody. It's like, oh just the guy person marrying us will say all these words and then we'll be like, yes, yes. And then kiss and that's it. You know, no, we're not here to perform. I do that. On, we do that other times. <laughs> just, just marry us. But they wrote some really beautiful vows, which is really gutsy. And I love it. And intimate weddings are really nice. I think also too, the older we get, a more I'm going to more smaller weddings. It's not such a like a show a and big, a thing. And a big, it's more about like oh, you production. know, people and the food and the good times. So it was fun. We got COVID from it, which sucks, but oh well. And we have a wedding coming up, actually. Oh yeah. Oh, we do have I. You know, I'm like oh yeah, we you do, you do, you have it. Yeah, we're both having our friend Pawhead mom is getting, getting married. married. So uh, that's, is that next weekend? That's it's next, next weekend. weekend. Yes. Yeah. So another wedding, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Hopefully we won't get COVID from that one. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? No. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> also, we, uh, they, they took all of our whole bathroom out, which is great. That means Yay. the house is almost done. But like Progress. those fuckers got COVID. Progress. So then the whole week they were out because now <laughs> everybody's got COVID. But um, you know what? Oh, man. Hopefully they start this week. Hopefully we have a bathroom by the end of the week. I feel like also the dust and all that stuff is also a contributing factor to why the congestions are all going. jacked up. Yeah, for sure. So once that's over, I'm going to hose the whole house down with some alcohol and fucking <laughs> hot steam. Clean that bitch out. And then it's like a brand new home. I got a brand new home for Christmas. Woo! So anyways. Hopefully it's on soon yeah for reals um i did want to report that my new job is going great and not only that but i recruit i've recruited some more pot smoking moms yo <laughs> uh you know you pick up vibes how do these conversations come up because i don't trust anybody at work to have these conversations girl i, I don't know i, I just guess because i work like, in hr so I, it's just no but also i think like you pick up vibes yeah you pick up vibes you pick up you know, vibes i don't ever say anything well, um, I don't know, man. I really do pick up vibes and I kind of feel like who fucking cares Yeah. anyway. And I don't know. It feels so good to connect that way that like I don't <laughs> care about what the repercussions are because I already feel the vibes. I already like I already know that the person's a wee, a fucking stoner, a pot smoking mom, like for sure. I have the vibe. Pick it up. I know she's one of us. So then I'm like, you you put the little subtle clue down, and then they take it, and then you're like, yeah. So not only did the first the, the one of the moms that trained with me, not only did I hook her up with one of, with the ganja clinic, 
Yeah. She got, I got her, her card. Like, I got her hook up for her card, and she now has her card. So, Yay. Isn't that great? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you know, another trainee from the class after us comes in. And, like, I start picking up vibes, like, you know, when we were helping each other out and we're throwing gifts. I communicate in gifts a lot. It's a love language <laughs> and memes and stuff. So, you know, they were putting some fun gifts down and we're having conversations. And, like, I started, t- she gave me her phone number and we started texting on the side. And then, like, she's originally from New York. That's another thing, too. If you're from New York, bro. That's like their biggest demographic. I know <coughs> you're their 90% chance that you smoke weed if you're from New York. <laughs> Come on. So, you know, um, I got into the conversation and then, you know, I got to drop the podcast after I'm like, you're one of us. And then this was the whole conversation, which I feel like is really interesting because we have a different experience than a lot of moms out there. And it's very apparent because of all the conversations we've had with all the moms. A lot, a big, a big conversation is like, oh, I don't have other weed mom friends. Yeah. This girl was like making a joke about like, I don't have any friends. So then we started talking and she's like, yeah, I don't know anybody else or I don't have any weed friends, weed mom friends. And I was like, well, bitch, you found all of us yeah, now. We're so, a whole group. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Now you have no excuses. Like you're a part of the pot smoking mom. So. And we actually, in the interview later, we speak to another kind of mom, you know, community kind of moms. Can of moms come out? Can of bombs? Can of mom bombs? Can of, yeah. Oh, so she's our guest for today. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I'm so excited for that because we had a really fun time talking to her too yeah, and just yeah. being like, woo. And she's had the same experience where a lot of moms are like, I don't, I don't have a weed mom. Right. Friend. And then she's like, come on. <laughs> and it's just come like, it goes here. back to like how we're like, you know, I don't know. This is a thing too where you have friends. And then your friends introduce you to their other friends. And then you become friends with their friends. And it's like, I don't know. Well, let's just put this in the notes for uh, getting high before the show. Yeah. <laughs> the a, whole new, such a, thing. a whole new process like, with the pre-show yeah, show. Yeah, for real. Yeah. So we just started the pre-show show. We got that recorded. But like, then we smoked too much. <laughs> We're We're lightweights already. And we didn't even smoke that much. But it was enough to, um, you know. Well, you know what? It was just the update stuff. So yeah, whatever. We could fucking science this out. <laughs> we could put AI. We could do an AI. <laughs> we could, we gotta get creative, but it could, it would work. We'll make it work. <laughs> well, Meredith and <laughs> and Lolo got our, to yeah. see everything. <laughs> our top two bestie patrons. They are They're seeing of the all of it happen, so they got to see the show. Unfolding. They did not get recorded. Which is pretty fun, right? Like you guys are have here in the background seeing all the shit go down in real time. <laughs> you know all what right, though? Right. It's fun. Like, hey, I'm honestly I'm here to have fun and this is fun. So we could just put an image to technical difficulties and no, that we're talking I'm about telling you, for the we whole do... first part that's just audio. Listen, there's gotta be <laughs> we could figure something out. We'll figure it out. Okay. So you found weed moms. So I just, I'm the recruiter. I'm the meat. I'm the pot smoking mom recruiter over here. I love it. I'm in recruitment. We were talking earlier on our sesh when we got too baked, (laughs) uh, where we were like, oh, if you're going to work for the pot smoking moms, we're going to give you a drug test, but it's got to come back positive. (laughs) You better be high. (laughs) I'm so high, I forgot to take the test. Oh, well, you know, you qualify automatically. (laughs) Oh, my God. So we're continuing on our biweekly schedule. Yeah, I know. Life is still kind of hectic. And you know what, guys? I think it's working. Nobody's bitched at us about it. We did record our first pre-sesh episode with our patrons that will be airing on the off weeks for patrons only. Right. And you can check that out by becoming a patron. You could see all the stuff that happened leading up to all of this right now. <laughs> it got us how why we were so high right. before this show. You know, having good conversations with good people. That's right. Hey, it is bi-weekly. Uh, it is every other Wednesday. Uh, we do things on the off week with our patrons, like we just said. So if you want to do that, check it out. We're also, you know, we're experimenting. We're trying things. So, you we're know. Evolving. We're evolving. We're <laughs> evolving. Hey, uh, we love our patrons, so a very special thanks goes out to them. 
check out our website and see how you could support us on Patreon. If you, if you can't become a patron, just try to rate or review this episode, like it, follow us on all our social medias. Make sure you're following us on YouTube. What's it called? Subscribing to our channel. That's what they say over there. Subscribe. Please subscribe. Please smash that like button. Subscribe. <laughs> and that like sprinkle button. some love in the comments. I don't know. I, they don't say that, but they can. And okay. you can. You can sprinkle some love in the comments. Now we can actually start the show. So this is. We are recording. Yeah, we could like. <laughs> well, we could. Yeah. We'll, no, I mean the the rest of the show. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so you this is where we're entering the segment. We're going to news nugs, y'all. Hey, everybody. Get high with us. News, news nugs, nugs where, where we get, get high and, and read news to you. you. So Japan amends cannabis law allowing for medicinal products, oh, but criminalizing what? recuse. But this is a big step forward because like they've always been really strict on cannabis over there. So I'm wondering. So like, wait, but if, they didn't. If, if I wonder if they respect international like somebody they might has their medical sometimes it purposes. takes. Yeah, but I don't know about that. If they want a foreigner with weed, no, I don't know that they're. I mean, whatever. We'll see what happens. Yeah, well, I don't know. We'll read it. I didn't. We'll see. All right. So the previous law prohibited administering or taking cannabis derived medicines. Like many other Asian countries, cannabis in Japan is illegal for both medicinal and recreational use. Though, even though, though, even with some of the world's strictest cannabis related laws, the future for cannabis in Japan looks just a little brighter as a recent move has opened the door to potentially usher in a new medicinal cannabis and industrial hemp industry in the country, though it doesn't come without its caveats. Counselors pass a, on Wednesday, a majority vote in Japan's House of Counselors passed a revision of the country's cannabis control law. It effectively lifted the ban on cannabis derived pharmaceuticals. Oh, pharmaceuticals along with estal establishing new criminal penalties for the use of cannabis, first reported by Japan News. The previous law uh, prohibited administering or taking cannabis-derived medicines, and the revised law deleted this provision and reclassified cannabis under the narcotics category within the narcotics control law. So there, okay, this effectively made it... <laughs> Legal to use medicine derived from cannabis. So it's not like weed. It's just medicine derived from cannabis. Right. Well, yeah. And it's like, but it's, well, but that's the thing though too. Okay. Let's keep, 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 keep. Yeah. So it says this effectively made it legal to use medicine derived from cannabis in Japan. Once efficacy and safety are confirmed and approved by pharmaceutical affairs bodies. Previously, pharmaceuticals derived from cannabis were only allowed to be used in clinical trials. So they're talking about like, Farm like that you like what's that pharmaceutical version of weed that people can get? There's like a pill. Oh yeah. They're talking about these kind of products, I think. I don't think they're talking about like, weed. You know what I mean? Right, but I it's mean it's only it's, like medicine that pharmaceutical companies have created that are derived from cannabis. Right. But they still have to make the weed to get the medicine from it. To incorporate. Yeah, them. for sure. Yeah. For sure. But I'm just saying they're not going to allow people to be buying weed. Right. Well, that's what it seems like. <laughs> Given the efficacy of cannabinoids in treating epilepsy, among many other conditions, there have been increasing calls in the country to lift the previous ban. However, the revised laws also introduced a prohibition on unauthorized cannabis use, setting a prison sentence of up to seven <gasps> years for violations Holy per Japan Times. Jesus. A country previously only criminalized the import, export, cultivation, transferring, and possession of cannabis. The lack of criminalization for cannabis use was partially to protect farmers who may inadvertently absor abs absorb. absorb plant compounds while growing it for use in hemp products. This change was due in part to growing concerns around cannabis use in young people as arrests for cannabis, particularly among the younger demographic, have increased more than for any other drug in recent years. That sounds about right. <laughs> in 2021, Japan saw... everywhere. <laughs> right. <clears throat> in 2021, Japan 
saw a record number of arrests with 5,783. Whoa. <laughs> and approximately 70% of those individuals were in their 20s or younger. Or maybe, younger. maybe you should just change the laws so you don't have all these arrests. While they supported lifting the ban on medicinal cannabis, the left-leaning political party Rewa Shinsengumi wow. opposed the amendments to the cannabis control law that created new criminal penalties for cannabis use. What previously had no penalties will now harshly will now be harshly punished with a maximum of seven years Holy in prison. Shit. I oppose the bill because there's a serious problem here, said re uh, Representative. Is that Representative? I guess Taro Rep Yamamoto, leader of the party. Yeah, yeah that is a problem because they're like, oh, we're going to legalize yeah, medicinal right, right. drugs, and then like pharmaceuticals, but wrapped but with it's that a racket. Is, oh, we're going to criminalize right. it even more right. on the other end. So now we can. What? That's, that's insane. They can't pass that. Yeah, that's some fuck shit. It's likely that the government will also define permitted levels of THC and cannabis derived products over time. Currently, CBD and other hemp derived products can be legally imported into Japan so long as there is no observable level of THC and it's been derived through stalks and seeds. Can't come from a flower. When it comes to the country's already booming CBD and hemp industries, the amendment will will likely allow for products derived from flour to be imported into Japan legally so long as THC content falls within the newly defined limit. The new amendment also requires the government to establish a framework to promote hemp cultivation within Japan, which could lessen the country's reliance on imports. The government is set to increase the number of cultivation licenses in the country by changing so they will be cultivating by changing the current Cannabis Control Act to the law concerning blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I, especially that blah part. <laughs> so Japan will issue two types of grower licenses. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds like they're, um, they're fucking shit up there. I think, they're, really, pretending, really, I think uh, they're pretending they're like, yeah, we're, we're accepting cannabis, but no, it's a lie. Yeah, I don't know. That's a After I was hopeful trade when I saw that headline. I was like, oh, oh wow. I yeah. could actually maybe. No. No. Build ya. <laughs> Build ya. So we had for Smoke and Socials a couple of tickety talks. We couple got a couple. Talks. Well, you know what? And I want to preface the Smoking Socials with I feel like um, I've been getting the teacher TikToks for a minute now and like. We had talked about one a few shows back where the teacher was like going off about the kids coming to school smelling like weed. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And then in that whole time too, I had gotten another TikToks, one of which, you know, there's a TikTok we're going to show that has kind of a couple of clips of different TikToks where teachers talking shit yeah. about dumb kids or whatever. Gen Alpha. They're <laughs> yeah, saying Gen, Gen Alpha. Alpha is like terrors. So like... um. I started seeing those back in the day and like, you know, it's the same conversation when we were talking about that one teacher where it's kind of like, you know, there's got to be a lot more to the story. Like we're, we're, we're going to talk a lot about thing, it today. It Gen Alpha, like I was seeing this one teacher, this one video that we're going to show is like kind of recapping a bunch of different right. videos. And one of the ones that I and saw I kept were seeing one in some there. some of the ones that, that yeah. are in there. And I'm like, why is everybody talking about like, this is not my experience with my child and i know that every parent's like that's not my kid you know but like right and that's why I, we're, yeah. I i'm like am i like just delusional but i've seen how my kid behaves even you know yeah. even the teachers my, themselves tell me i wish all my kids in my class were like you're you know well but that's the thing too right so like are we not seeing the other kids in the class that the teacher wishes our kids were like because so i've been to whatever, my kids class we roll and the clip right well, well, well yeah it's I'm, a bunch of teachers yeah. hating on basically our kids generation like our kids are considered gen alpha right right yeah and yeah and i just again what i was gonna say is i've been kids in present now, in the basically. classroom and i've been around other other the, her peers in her class and i don't really get this vibe but again it might also be from different a different de demographic i don't know we could we could show the video and then talk about it afterwards yeah Oh, the clip. 
Gen Z teachers are talking about the poor behavior of Gen Alpha students, and some of y'all are finally starting to believe us when it comes to how much we've missed the mark on raising these kids right. Because I have gray in my hair and I'm 36 years old, people tend to tune me out as soon as I open my mouth when I start talking about these issues we're seeing in the classroom with our kids these days. So before I go on, why don't we review some of the evidence from some of the other creators on this app who might be a little bit more of a relatable age. This is my folder of crying teachers, and they are confused and frightened by the behavior of Gen Alpha. They're saying Gen Alpha is defiant, aggressive, disrespectful, and rude. Having to teach and work with you guys as children has been the most traumatic experience of my life. They don't respect any authority. You ask them, can you stand in your designated spot? They're telling you no and shut up. They're throwing things at each other. They're throwing things at other people, other classmates. You say, can everybody sit in their spot? I don't want to, I'm not doing that. You don't get to tell me what to do. You're not my mom. Like, I'm not even trying to be funny, but these kids are, I'ma just say this. I teach seventh grade, they are still performing on the fourth grade level. I'm a middle school teacher. I'm also 22 years old. And I will tell you, by far we are doomed like these kids do not care like i have kids all they want to do all day long is get high like i need to ask millennials um why are your kids so awful and more importantly why do you think it's so funny your kids cannot read they cannot write they are ill-mannered I've been trying to sound the alarm about Gen Alpha students and their poor behavior in their classrooms as well as their literacy problems since May of last year. But because of my age and how I look every time I make a video about these topics. So yeah, that's basically a lot of teachers, a lot of young teachers that seem very frustrated with their their class. Right, their kids, the their, kids, the just generation. They're generalizing the whole you know generation as just disrespectful aggressive you know yeah uh illiterate <laughs> yeah it's pretty crazy yeah i don't know i i mean i i'm not a teacher i i vouch for teachers i feel like we need to celebrate and glorify teachers more than we do mm -hmm. i feel mm -hmm. they're very underappreciated um and i don't know i'm always really fighting for the teachers i i i think that they do a lot more than a lot they of should for teachers right i think they do a lot more than they should they don't get the respect that they deserve and, they, you know, they get dragged through the mud all the time for everything. Because even just thinking back the last five years, bro, they've had to deal with the whole pandemic shit. They have to deal with the whole uh, guns because like, you know, yeah. that's a problem. And, that, and we've pinned that Total back on dress. them. You know, and it's just like, I do really feel like they need to be more respected, more appreciated. And I don't think that that's the general consensus from other parents in other places. And I mean, even here, here in Florida, but I don't know. I see there's a lot of parents who are trying to like participate and be involved. And I don't know. What do you, what do you think? It's just my experience of the kids that I know don't seem to fit what these teachers are saying to me like our kids like i think your kids are pretty well behaved you know yeah they could be a little rambunctious i mean but they're, they're not they're kids right yeah they're little kids and but stuff, they're definitely but... they can read right they follow instructions right. they're well behaved. other friends of mine's kids behave well my son behaves well all his friends that i know at least but my son has said that the teacher has to yell all the time because there are other kids in the class right that do misbehave and do act out and do not listen and stuff like that. So like, again, generalizations. Yeah. And demographic, like really, where are you and what are the kind Yeah, what are the kinds of students that go there? I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty heavy topic because like, yeah, we don't want, we want to be the best. We want to be really good parents. Like I feel like a lot of times too, we, are trying to heal from, um, you know, our trauma, our generational trauma. We're trying to approach parenting a little different. I think that we are more exposed to more information. So it's a little harder. It's a little more um, exhausting to parent in the nowadays. But I also think some of these teachers are really young, too. And I don't think they have a fully formed the one kid, like that one yeah, person, I'm not going to call them a kid. Years. They're an adult, yeah. 22 years old. But I mean, yeah, that's still, still really young, young and really, I mean, how long have they been teaching and how, what's the experience like? So I don't know. I think we definitely have to 
fix ourselves if there's a lot of millennials who are doing terrible parenting and stuff like that's pretty shitty i don't want to have it reflected upon us yeah i don't know i was just really surprised i'm like why what is going on yeah. is it really like then then they say like that they're like this because these kids like grew up on ipads and like too unsupervised and screen listen, time i'm gonna talk about like i have a it's a struggle and it's I'm like, a struggle maybe some kids yeah and in our house we just started struggle. talking about like boundaries and setting rules around these kinds of things because yeah it's it's exhausting too for us because we're trying to monitor what the hell they're doing online too so also we need to like kind of make them know know that they don't have to be online all the time but we also don't have to be online all the time while we're all online <laughs> but i mean you know yeah we need to kind of make it we need to teach them about boundaries. And that means not just boundaries with other people, but like with yourself where you say, OK, you know, this time now I have to do this. And yeah. this time here I got to do this. And then when I have time and one preschool teacher, I guess, is so fed up with Gen Alpha and couldn't deal with how rambunctious they are. We have this next TikTok video oh. where, OK, Wait, we feel like this can has I, been completely blown out of proportion. You, didn't you also have a nice TikTok video of a teacher oh, being yes. talking about how the kids are? I like, did, but I didn't. I didn't. Send oh, that one to me. I, we should. I should. We should have put that one. There was another video. <coughs> this was something was, nice about Jenna. It was. It was how, nice. It was a how compassionate or like how yeah their emotional was intelligence about, uh, their emotional intelligence right and it was like a situation where she saw the kids in action like kind of going back and forth and the one kid was like look let's take a time out so we could think and process what's happening right now and then we can talk to each other when we've all had time to like think about what's happening and the, the teacher was like oh damn <laughs> So, you know, I mean, I kind of also want to go in there with a the positive and say, like, there is some good coming out of all the, the parenting we're trying to do, mm -hmm. because I feel like, honestly, it does hurt because we're like, we're the millennials and those are our children. And like, we want to do the best we can for them to be the best. Yeah. So it does kind of hurt to hear this because it's a generalized, it's, it is a generalization. Mm -hmm. But like, I also wanted to say, especially this. she's like millennials. Why do your kids suck? And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like, yeah, I felt it's so attacked. Right. And some <laughs> of those. And that's another thing, too. Some of the way these people are presenting themselves is for the TikTok comments. And for and that's why it's kind of like sometimes it's like, do I rely on this? Should I trust this source? Because they're being a little sensational with the information they're giving. And that's all part of the allure to like, oh, TikTok, like viral video of this lady saying all this stuff but anyways there was another one another video that um we're not showing but i'm going to talk about where it was a podcast crunchy podcast ad and he was uh going off crunchy podcast. crunchy podcast ad and he was going off about how his homeschool way is better than the putting your kids in public school way where i was like what <clears throat> and he starts talking about Oh, how he switched to homeschool because they're indoctrinating your kids. And I'm like going, dude, I know a lot of teachers and they're not trying to indoctrinate our kids. They're trying to survive. OK, they're trying to teach your kids to read from scratch. Like, it's just like. And then while following the rules of what the administration says they have to follow. Right. And you although have to do it this way and this way only. Right. And the curriculum, which you had curriculum. mentioned, too. And I agree. Like, yeah, fine. The school has a curriculum and they have to teach that. And if you think that's indoctrinating and they're fine, just teaching whatever, to testing, they're not teaching to learn. They're teaching to standardize testing. Right. So that they test well. And it's, it's but ridiculous. on top of that, though. I also think that like the us parents are doing educating on our end and the education doesn't stop at the school. Like yeah. it's not like a kid gets out of school and goes home and that's it. They turn their brain off. Like as a parent, you're still interjecting in teachable moments exactly. and you're trying to make them a better human. I mean, ultimately uh, us anyways, you too, probably who, who you, if you're listening to this podcast, you're one of us. So you're probably trying to do the best you can too with your mm -hmm. kid and stuff. Just like the teachers are doing the best they can. With and what, I feel what that the too. State of whatever state they're in is requiring of them. Exactly. And we all know that Florida requires some crazy ass. Yeah. Florida's going to Florida. 
But, you know, I still feel like it's beyond that. Like teachers shouldn't be the only ones that teach your kids because if they're, they're only teaching half the story, you got to teach the rest of them at home. So. So we have another clip of this video <laughs> of another teacher, another TikTok <laughs> in a different situation. You're probably going to have a lot to say about it, too. Vamos a ver. Kids were being drugged with sleepy time patches without their consent, and they say they were disguised as stickers. Did the teacher give you any stickers, any patches? Yeah. And where would she put them? Right here. Right here. In inside? Yes. Show me where the teacher put the sticker on you. Um, why my salt? They're not just plain old stickers. Parents are accusing a teacher at Options for Learning Head Start in South El Monte of placing Zen Patches mood calming stickers on their children without permission. So we were surprised um, and really upset. Because um, you don't you you bring your kids and you expect it to be good, you know? They were being put on every single child on this classroom. The parents allege the teacher would take the patches off the students right before it was time to go home, but got caught the day this parent showed up unannounced. We came early for my little one and we caught it. She says her little boy had a mood calming sticker on his back. When she started asking questions, she discovered other students were also given similar patches. And we've seen a lot of behavioral issues sleeping patterns, eating patterns different. So we've seen that the children ha are having like withdrawal uh, effects. I don't even know what the teacher was thinking when she did that. Maybe it was easier for them to control all the kids, to have them fall asleep faster. I mean, as a physician, I would emphasize the fact that applying any substance, like an essential oil to children without thorough understanding of their health history and parental consent is not advisable. Dr. Daniel Turner Yoveras is shot. An educator would put medicated stickers on children without parental consent, even if the patches only have calming essential oils. Essential oils can cause allergic reactions uh, for anyone with skin sensitivities, and their effects are not uniformly regulated or standardized by anyone. So there is a risk with that in itself. The school issued a statement that says in part, the employee is no longer with options for learning. Our investigation is ongoing and an incident report has been submitted to licensing, which will conduct its own investigation. We are reinforcing child safety with all our teachers and classroom staff. Firing her is not good enough at all. Oh, I want justice, you know, she should be in jail. Parents believe that other teachers were also involved in this incident and they have pulled their kids out of school. Meanwhile, the school itself is saying that it was only one teacher and that person is no longer there. Reporting from El Monte, I'm Gina Silva. I'll send it back to you guys in the They're sending us back. She's sending it back to us in the studio. Hey, uh, my initial my reaction when you see that, you're like, oh my God. Because the way they use the words medicated, withdrawals like things like that you're like just, oh my god did she drug like but it was like just essential oil patches I, which is well, still wrong yeah it's I mean, still wrong you should not you should but the most they can say that was bad about it is that they could get an allergic reaction if their skin is sensitive millennials kids are so bad they're putting calm your ass patches on them <laughs> in the schools that's that's the that's the bottom line here i guess guys uh but I, but I, you know what I do? This is a thing. I started reading the comments in that video too. Yeah, they're right here. Like where, I pulled them up right. in case you wanted to And see. I just was like, okay, um, there's one lady who was like, I think, no, in the video, one lady's like, oh, she got to paint the justice. Justice got to be served. She got to go to jail. And I'm like, look, I can understand her losing her teaching license and her never being able to teach again. Because quite frankly, if you're doing this to control the kids, this is not the profession for you. Um, I do understand the parents getting mad because this could essentially like give the kid an allergic reaction or whatever. But like sometimes, too, I think some of them are being a little dramatic. Like we're not throwing this teacher in jail because go to jail, of fucking but... calm your ass stickers like <laughs> and then and then parents act like they don't give them like what is the other one? Melatonin, Melatonin and stuff. But I, I agree. You it has to be the parent yeah, the to parents. administer just like the doctor said in the clip. Or get but, permission from parents. Can I 
put this sticker that has these essential no, oils. No, girl. I would not ask a parent. Are you kidding me? The parent will be like, excuse me, what? <laughs> no. I would not do it. I know. And if I like, have, and if that's what you got to resort to to calm the kids to down, use it, to- it has to be, you know, but there's no reason to go to jail for it. But jails, that's harsh, bro. And like that's attacking, harsh. it's a little, it's a little much. Yeah. She's going to learn by losing her job and possibly being unable to teach again. Yeah. Millennials got to control your kids. <laughs> Uh, I think it was all like kind of ridiculous. They're like asking the little kids, where'd they put the sticker? I was like, okay. <laughs> but Uncle Jesse found the nice video about oh, our kids. Nice, yeah. Okay. So we can watch that one. This Feel a little better. Nice. Okay. As a teacher in 2023, I would just like to discuss Gen Alpha for a second. And no, I'm not talking about the whole iPad kid thing. That's a completely different discussion. What I want to talk about specifically is um, the emotional intelligence that some of these kids have, right? Like, I feel like they're being raised by a generation of parents that just, like, you know, have been to therapy, are breaking those generational trauma cycles, you know, ending it with them. And it really shows in some of these kids. Like, just, just the other day, two of my students were having an argument, right? And before I could even step up and intervene, kid one turns to kid two and just goes, listen, it sounds like you've got a lot going on. And I feel like maybe you're putting some of that on me. And I don't think we should have this discussion until we can both be calm about it. So let's just take a break and we'll come back and we'll talk about it later. And I just, <laughs> what? like they're 10, you know, they're 10 and 11 years old in my class. And like the way that they handled that was amazing. You know what 10 year old me would have done? Cried and then went and told the teacher, like, <laughs> Are they feeding these kids? Ah. That's See? cute. And I really like her. I wish she was my kid's teacher. <laughs> she was cute. But like, you know, uh, yeah, I she approached it differently. I would like to t- have her take on the iPad kid thing because she yeah, sounds like curious. she's got stuff there. Some, too. Covers, some opinions. <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't know. I would trust her opinion a little more, I guess, maybe. Not just because it's positive, but yeah, probably because it's positive. <laughs> but that was nice that was good it was it was and i think uh we do try to take the time to speak to our kids more like they're people instead of right talking to do as to i them. say right. just because i say it not explain why not explain you know the reasoning behind yeah. things you know Right. And I think what our perspective is like, we want them to come to us with everything. So that means we have to be ready and open to receive everything. And like, Mm -hmm. we're trying to like, you know, give them room to grow and, uh, and make mistakes and stuff. But like, I don't know. I, yes, I guess maybe we take it too hard because our kids are there. And so now we're like, Oh my God, that's, we gotta be better than that. But like, yeah, if there's people, you know, and, and I don't think like telling a fuck up parent to not be a fuck up parent is going to make them not be a fuck up parent. But like, I don't know. I will try to do better just to make it. I mean, like, I think we just want to make our kids better so that we can make sure we have some better world to live in. Hopefully. 100%. But anyways, interesting. It's our Let- little way to try to change this world. Right. Because we still got to be in it. So, um, but tell us what you think. Like, do you see the same? Are you a teacher? Do you have this experience where you think it's like we're doomed? <laughs> that's kind of <laughs> that's the, the that's just the language, they were saying. right? And one of them said literally, "We're doomed." And, and I, I was feel just like, like uh, I have the complete opposite opinion. I feel like we have. I feel like such we're such a better chance once these kids are older. I feel like we're doomed, but in a different way. <laughs> Maybe they feel they're doomed. The planet's dying. You right. Know, they're they getting gotta... killed in schools. And... Yeah, right. Exactly. They're like, what's the I, point? Exactly. I feel like, and we've had this conversation lately. We're like, we can see everything now. There's yeah. nothing that's secret anymore. So everybody's kind of had this illusion. Like, we know what's happening. <laughs> well, we're ready for our last segment before our interview. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do go. it. Bum, bum, bum. I love you, Miami. I love you, Miami. All right, so Florida Medical Marijuana Company asks court to block legalization initiative. It would significantly impact its business and patients. Oh, this sounds like they're only thinking of themselves to me. 
<laughs> They're not really worried about everybody else. So a Florida medical marijuana certification company is seeking to block an adult use cannabis legalization ballot initiative in the state Supreme Court, arguing, arguing that the reform disproportionately prioritizes profits for recreational sales and that it would significantly impact our business operations and the well-being of our you clients. Know, and I never thought about that situation, that scenario where now that it's recreational, it would be putting a damper on the businesses that do give the license to have the ability to purchase the weed. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause people are like, what do I need to get my right. medical license for anymore? If it's just legal. Right. So My Florida Green, a service that connects patients seeking medical cannabis cards to doctors who can certify them, is asking the court to allow it to submit an, an amicuous cure brief in the case contesting the smart and safe Florida legalization measure that was brought by State Attorney General Ashley, Ashley Moody. The company says that it's not supposed, oh, sorry. The company says that it's not opposed to adult use legalization in principle, but it's arguing that there are potential consequences of the 2024 constitutional amendment that would impact patient care and public health. We are not attempting to block adult use. My Florida Green CEO, Nick Garley, told Marijuana Moment. However, we are shedding light on the bastardization, bastardizing of the constitutional amendment that we passed for medical cannabis back in 2016. And a hater <laughs> in a letter sent to the court, my green, my Florida green, I keep saying it backwards. My Florida green recognized that it missed the deadline to file an ambiguous curé brief, but it required, oh, so they're late. They're late with this and they're still like, but we're still going to, but it requested the justices exercise discretion and allow it to proceed given the company's role in providing medical cannabis services to more than 40,000 Florida patients. The court's decision will significantly impact our business operations and well-being of our clients. They wrote our organization is deeply vested in the outcomes of the advisory opinion. While the brief lays out a series of legal considerations for the court, some may question the idea of a medical cannabis company advocating against an adult use expansion. I'm questioning Which it. may reduce demand for services such as those offered by my Florida Green. States that legalized marijuana generally see adult use sales eclipse those for medical cannabis as the market evolves. Mm -hmm. Garule, the CEO, told Marijuana Moment in a phone interview on Wednesday that while he can 100% understand why people might assume there's a financial element to the complaint, they couldn't be any more wrong about his own reasons for taking the action. <laughs> I'm in the trenches. I'm literally dealing with these people on a daily basis to service their needs, he said. We help people alleviate their symptoms. We help get people get off or of reduce the need for prescription drugs. We help people reduce the need for alcohol, improve their quality of sleep, lower their anxiety, improve their overall quality of life. I think that's more the weed doing it, but okay. The weed is doing it. <laughs> I think the weed is doing the heavy lifting there, buddy, but all right. You're, you're just you're, getting you're, them, you're getting the them the weed, to right. the weed. So you're worried that once everyone has access to the weed, yeah, you they no don't longer, need you They anymore. don't need you because you're that middleman. You're the middleman, man. He says his concern it is, is for the business. Yeah, but and I mean, look, yeah, honestly, just get into the, the find another route. I guess. I mean, look, there's it, still going to be a need for people that want to be patients, right? And consultations and it's stuff just going to go who down. Are seeking medical advice and help from people who know what they're talking about. Exactly. He says his concern is that the state's medical cannabis market hasn't mattered, matured. Sorry, to the <laughs> point hasn't matured to the point where it can effectively provide for existing patients, let alone meet the demand for dual use consumers. Again, are you growing it? I don't get. That's not really something you need to worry about. The notice to the court says the legalization initiative may infringe upon individual privacy rights and equal protection under the law for medical cannabis patients by requiring medical disclosures and dosage restrictions. These concerns are framed within the robust privacy protections afforded by the Florida Constitution, it says, citing case law examples that underscore the state's commitment to protecting individual privacy, a key consideration in evaluating the bill's compliance with const constitutional standards. Mm. <laughs> hey that's fine we could just end that there and be like well you know some would argue it, it does Look, suck it really does suck because they were making money off of this but like at the same time I mean, there's why still do we gonna need to be a market for people that need their medical cards it's just gonna be less 
Right. And that's going to affect their business. So they're just going to have to, 100% it's going to affect right. their business. Right. And that's the they whole have worry to adapt about with that. the market. Yeah. You have to evolve into to whatever the, the market. market is because you can't hold, hold everybody it, back just for your I own benefit. At the end of this, it says a poll released last month found that nearly seven out of 10 registered Florida voters say they support the marijuana legalization initiative with majorities of every demographic surveyed in favor of the reform yeah look so, i'm like telling 70% you 70 percent of floridians want it's adult happening use cannabis it's happening if it's on the ballot it's gonna fucking happen but on top of that this the whole middleman doesn't need to exist and unfortunately that's what the, this fucking america is all about now capitalism is how we how can we nickel and dime you their money how can you how can you get nickel and dimes for every goddamn thing in, in america and this is like the same thing i was having a whole fucking blowout conversation about insurance and how useless that is and why the prices are they are is because insurance that's the middleman don't even get me started about your insurance for your insurance that's a whole nother scam too but at the same time it's like yeah we and then we want to grow it so, right, the other middleman, which would essentially be the dispensary, they're trying to put a stronghold on the market by not including home grow. And that's something we're going to have to fight for once we get rec, because that's the way it's going to happen is rec is going to happen. Who's going to benefit directly from that? It ain't going to be this guy who's bitching about this shit here in this article. It's going to be the true leave. The people who paid to get the ballot to get it on for you to vote, which you will vote on. Yeah. And then, oh, I mean, yeah, but other all the other steps. Too, like all the people in the state that now have access to legal cannabis. Right. But it's like, like I have you a see. friend visiting that's been working. OK, a friend from here, but has been living in the state of Oregon for several state years already is here visiting home and working from here for a while. And he was asking, like, how do I get weed? You know, because. He was so used to just being able to go anywhere and just buy it because he's lived in a state that has been legal for a very long time already. Yeah. And he's like, now I'm back here. And I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> I was like, oh, if you're not a medical patient. Legacy over here. There's this here. Uh, medical over here. Here's Miami High Life on Telegram. Right. He's a good friend. <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> there you go. Because, <laughs> but like, you know, it is kind of convenient on the tip of like having your card, but also people who are like, oh, that's expensive. It is. It's a little expensive. Also, too, dispensaries have had to get competitive with their prices as well. So the prices are not as crazy as it used to be. Like you can get a decent bud for $25, $30 yeah. on eighth. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty good. And then when you see some of the dispensary deals that some of these dispensary have, like, yeah, I will say I would like to I, I I get from what is convenient, what is priced right. So it is a highly competitive market. But I do understand those people are like, oh, I got to pay every seven. What is it? Seven months for your license yeah. and then your rec, your script. Yeah. With the doctor. So it's well, like, no, your license is annual, but then your script is every seven months. Right. And that's. The middleman here who's like, oh, I don't want you to fucking have access so, to it. It's all I those mean, people, all the clinics and stuff. Yeah, I mean, listen, unless you have billions of the millions of dollars to put into getting people to sign stuff. I had I, I went to a craft show with um with my friends and my kids, and the the at the door they were signing petitions for women's rights for abortion, for abortion rights yeah, and i was like what and me and her were like yeah and we we're signing in there like and i was like making a funny joke with one of the ones when we got back out they were asking us to sign i was like no but i'm ready to start passing out the clipboard with you because <laughs> like yeah so everybody should be signing for this yeah and he's like oh, you can make money and i'm like yeah i know because we know people who have done that for mm -hmm. this whole ballot initiative that whatever you guys we've done we've gone through the whole process of it so it'll be really interesting to see what happens now when we vote for that stuff i think it's gonna pass i think it's gonna pass too with that we're coming to the end of the show with our interview with uh our homie that we met on instagram yeah she's got a lot of hot videos man she's going off she's great She's Her doing all, great. Yes. Lindsay Corum, owner of CBD Topicals Company, Canna Bombs. Canna Bombs. Host of Canna Moms podcast and Canna Moms Club events. 
she's just like us. We're just like her. Yeah. Well, except she's got a whole pop. She's got a very she has popular a whole very CBD. Catabom CBD company. Yeah. Um, they're organic, high milligram, low price products. She talks about them. Her focus is helping as many people as possible with her products and also creating a community for moms who consume and utilize cannabis. We had such a fun time with her. Hopefully we get to meet her in person. Here is our wonderful interview with Lindsay Corum. So we've been friends on social media and we've we've interacted in that way. So it's been it's nice to finally meet you face to face. Yes, and, I know. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about uh, Cannabombs. OK, uh, Cannabombs is a CBD topical company that I started after I had a major foot surgery and my body just like absolutely rejects any kind of medicine, like pain relief type, you know. Um, and I can do anything for it except smoke weed and use a topical. So I was making them myself. And, um, once I saw how much it helped, I like started selling it on Instagram, just like through DMS and stuff and got to the point where I started a website and that's basically how it started. And I make organic high milligram, low price CBD topicals. So what kind of topicals like are they scented uh, or anything like that? Like what what would you how would you describe your top topicals? Well, don't worry, I have some right here. So <laughs> <laughs> this is my best selling product. It's a pain relief staff. Um, everything from like a sunburn to fibromyalgia, chronic back pain, nerve pain, you name it. Like I've got a review for the product on that ailment. Um, and then they make roll-ons for anxiety, headache, and insomnia. Ooh, is, I, you put it like right here on your temples? And yeah, and like behind your ears, on your wrists. Um, swipe on your foot if they're clean. <laughs> <laughs> and then they make bath products. They make bath bombs, and then they make bath fizz, um, where oh. this is just a bath bomb in a bag, basically. So it hits the water and like fireworks out, basically. And they're high milligrams. So this has 800 milligrams. The roll-on has 500 milligrams. And then the salves are either 2,500 or 850. So they're up there. They're going to work. I always like to say people who try topicals and say they don't work, you have to watch the milligram dosage. And if they use like isolate, full spectrum, because a lot of them have only enough, which would be like an equivalent of like licking an Advil. Mm -hmm. I say this all day at my markets and stuff but yeah you can't expect to like for your headache to go away if you like lick an advil so putting a topical that has 100 milligrams and it's in this that's yeah. not going to do anything for you so i set out to make high milligram options that were still affordable because no one should have to pay that much money just to have pain relief yeah because usually it gets way more expensive the more Exactly. Yeah. Potent and more milligrams you have in it. So, you know, like a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't work for me. Like, what can you expect? What what kind of effects can you expect when you apply a topical? Because I, I honestly don't have a lot of experience using topicals. Mm -hmm. I have heard, heard people using it for headaches and applying it like on their on their forehead and their temples. But I'm not very familiar myself. Yeah. That's a good question. So uh, it's like a right on that spot relief, right? So when you take something and you ingest it, that's gonna go and do its thing everywhere. Whereas you can have, you know, immediate relief on like, say your elbow, say the ligaments in your elbow are messed up because you played too much pickleball or something. I don't know, that's popular now. <laughs> um, you put it right on there and uh, it, it's fast acting because everywhere you have a hair follicle, you have a CB1 receptor. And that goes like right to your endocannabinoid system. Now, what people can expect gets a little bit trickier because we all have a different endocannabinoid tone and we all take it in differently and we all need a little bit more or less. Like it just depends on you. So uh, I like to say as needed, but um, I have highlight bubbles on my Instagram, Cannabombs uh, with a Z and it has hundreds of reviews. So I like to just tell people if they're on the fence, just like click through those reviews. And I, there's going to be one that makes you change your mind. Cause I mean, they're insane. These reviews. 
people are off um, pain meds and like not taking Tylenol anymore. They're, I mean, it's crazy. Do you, have you heard of, um, do they do, do they put it on their hands for like arthritis and stuff? Yeah. Like that? A lot of people use it for arthritis, arth osteoarthritis. Like when I say I have a review oh. for, uh, sorry, that is my giant dog barking. <laughs> He's a great day. Okay. He's a great day. And so it's hard for him to be quiet. Um, <laughs> um, people have our osteoarthritis, um, have not given me, re given me reviews about it and, um, everything from like joint pain, knee pain. I mean, yeah, so to answer your question, yes. <laughs> cool. I definitely need to turn my mom on to that because she has rheumatoid arthritis, so um, she gets oh, yeah. like a lot of swelling um, in like the joints and like, you know, hands, uh, ankles, things like that. <clears throat> yeah. So that's like that's you that's say you that's have that's all that's these, cool. like you've already named a few, but like maybe what other, some, some of the other ailments you see people using it most commonly for? um also like period pain um when you have cramps you can apply it to your lower abdomen and it mm -hmm. helps a lot with that especially the bath bombs because the anti-gravity of the water and covering your full body in it like can give it more basically more cb1 receptors to enter through um so that's another one pregnancy pain stretch marks um eczema and psoriasis skin conditions like that uh, wow. pretty much any autoimmune disease hashimoto's like anything like that um people have used it after tooth uh ex extractions and things like this for like okay on their face uh hmm. after tattoos people use it for after tattoos i bring it to my massage therapist and she uses the salve and i make them i make a massage oil sometimes I like restock it every now and then. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I make a lube. Which <laughs> helps a lot of people with like IC, endometriosis, PCOS, like cervical pain. I get, I've had people message me and be like TMI, but this shit works on hemorrhoids. Like I <laughs> hear it all. I hear it all. So, yeah. Oh, it must be so nice to like get really good feedback like that for your products from people. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. Some, I've definitely had some adversities with the business and in my life where I've been like on the fence about continuing, but I get a review a, a, cu a couple a day, a few a day that I feel I'm that. Just like, okay, I that's how we feel with podcasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, so I have a podcast too. And people <laughs> yeah. are like, you're the reason why I am like, oh my God. <laughs> we can't stop now. Like, whoa. <laughs> so, yeah, that's cannabis. So, you came to CBD to help with your own relief, and you discovered, you know, it's very helpful for many other things. Like, uh, before that, like, how often, like, do you, are you a regular consumer of cannabis? Do you enjoy, you know, using cannabis, you know, like THC products as well? Yeah. So, well, first of all, my products are full spectrum CBD. So there is THC in them. That way you get the entourage effect because every cannabinoid needs to be present for you to feel like the full relief of the plant. But yes, I consume every day. I was just out back with my man smoking before I did this with you. Um, uh, yeah, I host a podcast called Canna Moms where I advocate for our moms who should smoke weed because you guys get it. That's why we're yeah. all together now um someone's gotta fucking stand on the rooftop and scream it and it's gonna be us i guess right and when Ow. did that relationship start like how like what age when tell us about your first time smoking weed yeah so <laughs> i i have like kind of a deep and interesting intricate story with it because i when i was younger my brother was seven years older than me and he was getting into trouble like juvie on yeah. like, probation for it, like doing UAs all the time, failing them, um, all for weed, right? I was in the DARE program, so I didn't <laughs> touch it until I was an, like an honors kid, like all of these things, like gifted education, captain of the POM team. I was like, you name it, I was trying to perfect, <laughs> perfectionist it. Um, Overachiever. Yes, yes, and then so ultimately, and then my, my brother ended up passing away because he was in like the wrong crowd and like oh, doing no. drugs. Right. Um, that's what I thought. 
Um, and I had this huge stigma with it. Like I couldn't, I was like everything that dare taught me and what I had seen through my brother, I was like, no, that's a drug. I'm not touching that. I get to college and I'm living in the honors dorms and like everybody's smoking weed. (laughs) Wait a minute. Uh, And my best friend, like my gay best friend who was dancing and like also wasn't smoking it with me in high school. Like we were just drinking and dancing all the time. So we were either at dance or like at a house party drunk. We never were even offered it. Like I hadn't even seen it. I knew what it smelled like um, from being at home, but Anyway, I get to college, I see all these honors kids smoking and my like boyfriend, my new boyfriend was smoking, like my best friend smoking, all these kids at college are smoking. I'm like, okay, all right, all right. The peer pressure happened. <laughs> yeah, well, I, again, I felt like comfortable enough. I'm like a big adult now, like I was 19 um, and I smoked out of a pipe. That's still young. Matt told me, that's my best friend, told me I wouldn't get high. He was wrong. <laughs> so I'm driving us. This is terrible. I'm driving. We're, I'm lucky to be alive. But I'm driving us on the freeway, like going probably slower than I think, but what felt like very fast. <laughs> You're probably going 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't really recall. Um, or but... the speed limit, because I'm a firm believer that a, yeah. when you're high, you drive the speed limit like yes, automatically. You like your instinct <laughs> is that speed. You're not in a rush anymore. You're like, whatever. I'll get there when I get there. Um, and so that was my first time. And then slowly but surely, it was like. So then I started. Um, then I started. Um, how do I say? Entrepreneurship on campus. <laughs> I get okay. Wow, you were like, you were just like, oh, okay, all right, and then now you just died. I was yeah. like, I, when I'm in it, I'm in it. I, yeah, I just, it's like to support my. <laughs> it just all clicked, like I, the, what it felt like, it what just it made more what sense. it didn't feel like after, like not having to, because the same way, like my body rejects medicine, it rejects alcohol too. Like I just reject things. <laughs> it was not like natural. All that's why. I didn't even mention this before, but all my products are organic. Like nothing that goes into my stuff isn't organic. It's all organic ingredients, organic essential oils, everything. So, cause I'm just, I'm so sensitive. I had a full body reaction to a different topical that had sulfa in it. Um, like literally bumped everywhere. Um, what happens when you drink alcohol? Like, just, you just get sick right I away? Have, I'm like, have fun for a little bit. If I go too far, like if I drink a little bit too much or I don't know, I just my I just throw up every time. Like You get like alcohol poisoning. I have you terrible sick. motion sickness. Like I can't be in the backseat of a car. Like, so my body is just really sensitive. When I, whenever I'm on anesthetic, um, I like almost have to stay overnight because I'm like having a hard time waking up. Um... So yeah, I don't know. I'm just really sensitive. Um, so I just something clicked, and I was I just I just started doing it more and more, um, and then slowly but surely, it was like you want to smoke before the party turned into like let's just stay here, <laughs> let's just stay here and smoke. And um, my best friend at, from college at the time, and we became roommates. Um, we lived on the same floor, and we were just like we were the chill dorm. Like everyone would come to our. Dorm, I actually had a volcano before nice. it was even like a thing. Yeah. So it didn't smell. Um, it wasn't loud. And so we would just stuff all the door openings with towels, <laughs> smoke that volcano all night, listen to music, and everyone would just be in and out of my dorm. It was uh it was amazing. Where'd you go to college? <laughs> that was college. Um ASU, Arizona State. That is so cool. You live like the legitimate college That's life awesome. where you live in the dorm. You go like, are you from yeah. Arizona? Did you? Yeah. Still, yeah. You're still like up, close to home. Like, I grew up about stuff? like an hour from ASU. Okay. So I was pretty close. Uh, yeah. I studied abroad, like smoked weed in a lot of countries. <laughs> so I had like That's a awesome. movie American experience. <laughs> 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 no, I just went to my local community college, but <laughs> but I did travel and I did smoke weed in a lot of countries. <laughs> Isn't it? It's like easier than you think, than people think anyway. 
That's awesome. So like how many, how many kids do you have and how are open are you and your husband with your family and your kids about your cannabis consumption? Well, so my whole family knows my deal because of Instagram and like my following and my mouth. <laughs> so your business. It's your life. If they're really a part of it, they should know, right? Yeah, they yeah. know about it. Um, but it's your life. I would say about half and half, like, get it. Some support me, but not really it. Like, they're like, yeah, good job. We're proud of you. But then, like, don't share anything or, like, believe, believe right. cannabis should be a medicine and things like this. But listen, as much as they can do is fine. Um, and then, so I have two biological kids and two bonus kids, I like to say. Um, I have been in their lives since they were three and a half and 12 months so they they feel like mine yeah <laughs> they are 14 almost 12 and then mine are four and a half and two and a half <gasps> mm -hmm. and I mean they know what I do they know what this is like this is mm -hmm. <laughs> when they see a weed leaf they say can of bombs but close enough <laughs> uh, my older two know exactly how we feel about it. We don't drink. I mean, I drink like if I go to a dinner with my friend or something, you know, or I don't know, very socially and very rarely. Sometimes I even just skip it. It depends if I have a joint or something, I I will skip it and just use that. Um, okay. But, yeah. so, you know, here and there, but like there's never alcohol here. So they just, I they just, they're super normal around it and they know, but they know that there's a stigma and they like, Especially the fourteen-year-old, he's like getting so much of that street smart. That where, yeah, yeah <laughs> he's like starting to get the world. Yeah, you know, and um, they follow me on Instagram and shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> then, oh, that's funny. Yeah, I can imagine when my kid's old enough to do that. Like he's still too young. I don't let him. I know it's a trip. Yet. These older ones are like so. It's so cool to see you know <laughs> how they're growing up. Yeah. That's awesome. And how long have you been doing your podcast? Yeah. Oh, man. When did I start that? I don't even know when I started. <laughs> I don't know when the first episode was. I took I took a really long break. And it's like still I haven't dropped season three, if you will. Um, after I went through a crazy thing, my mom passed away three weeks before I had my second kid oh, and she was wow. like my child care, my assistant. Like, so I like physically could not get to this podcast recording. Um, yeah. And so it's been a really long break, but I have like a season one and two and like maybe, I don't know how many episodes, but what I do know is that when it was like airing and dropping every week, I made it into the top 100 for the parenting category in Canada and top 250 for the parenting category in the U.S. Awesome. Cool. So people want to hear about it, um, you know, and so I'm so glad that we're like, I I am so non-competitive and like, like collaborative over competition. Like okay. the more mom, Canada mom podcast, the better. Exactly. So, the more people talking about it, it spreads the message more. That's the whole idea. We got to lift each other up and support each other. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. I actually, something funny happened. You guys made that like Avengers reel, the, like the same weekend we did. And I, I commented that. I was like, no way. We made the same reel. Like, I it's like know. we're on the same wavelength. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like some young person, I'm sure, was like, oh, shade. And I was like, literally not at all like no like, i didn't take it that way at all ever shade right <laughs> good for them good for us let's all just I yeah mean, take over the world Can yeah we? our ours went a little bit crazy i, I feel crazy. like that 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 real but i don't it got a good, lot of negative not in a good way as well we got yeah good, and you like there was a lot of good comments there yeah, was a lot right, of there was. Comments, there was a lot of great interactions it was just some people a lot were, of, there was a, a lot, lot of it got on the wrong side really, of the algorithm yeah oh uh, that's the it's worst a lot of too much exposure and just it was a it was like yeah, a sensitive a situation we were all 
wearing bathing suits were older, were like, you know, thick and chunky, and everybody had some shit to say about it. And it was just oh kind of God. like that's what the comments you know, were. Oh yeah. Nasty. Yeah. Social Very media nasty. like yeah. And I feel like I don't know, that kind of put me off on so I've been I have a love hate relationship with social media, as I'm sure you as an entrepreneur and and podcaster and plus and the way we're creator. censored as what our content is because of what our content is oh, I know, being yeah. about cannabis like we're suppressed on top of that yeah, on top yeah. of like it's very frustrating well and people love to you, you add on that to like the hate you get right. for even smoking for having fun having yeah and having fun and like for making a funny video getting yeah started. it's 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 a weird it's a weird like time to be alive. It's <laughs> and like what Sorry you just said, it. just for being a mom that smokes pot, like the the yeah. hate that one gets, or, like, like, or having smoke. a body that's not whatever like you expect. Right, their standard. standard, they they right. You know, and it's crazy to me too. A lot of times, people who have the worst things to say are marginalized people. It's insane to me when someone who's also getting a lot of backlash for stuff that they do comes and they shit all over somebody else. Like I understand that a lot of times these people's comments is a reflection of themselves. It has nothing to do it's about yeah. us. They're projecting, but it's really like, it could be really hurtful, especially when it, it's a lot one after the other and stuff. So, you know, it's, a, I don't know. Social media could be a, an ugly place but it can also bring us together and be a beautiful place because if it wasn't for social media we wouldn't be having this experience right now with each other so you know we so wouldn't it's have like, met some of our awesome friends that we have now yeah yeah and our, and our audience our listeners our other kind of moms i know it's social media also has the stigma it's like when people are online and they see you have a following and that you do a bunch of social media stuff and that you're a podcaster, they're like, oh, cool. But then, like, when you're telling people, you're almost like, yeah, you know, because it, ha it has a stigma as well. They're like, oh, right, yeah, right. Because you're is like, is that really a real It's like, not a real job. Yeah. It's not a real job. It's not a real yeah. hobby. It's not a real thing. That That's cool that you're doing that. Like, yeah. And I'm like, well, views convert literally to dollars when you're a small business owner. Like, which is why it's so frustrating to be censored and deleted and shadow banned constantly for a fucking bath bomb, bro. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, Oh my God. So, it, cause that's like literally money in the bank. Like mm -hmm. the more views, the more people. And I only say that cause like, hello, I have a family to support. Plus right. it's like literally saving people's like lives and helping them. Like people are getting off of addictive opioids. They're walking again. They're like, I don't know. It's so, I, I can't shut the fuck up about like cannabis advocacy for motherhood. So I have a podcast <laughs> and I make the things and I, make the things. And I throw events called Cannon Moms Club. Yeah. Tell us about, oh, yeah, about tell that. Us about that. Yeah. So that's like an off branch of the podcast. Apparently I don't have enough on my plate. <laughs> <laughs> They're just. So, hey, hey, hey. We we've done the you. same we exact club. thing. We're we like, you know, we know the bus, <laughs> you do the bus thing, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay so yeah you guys get it and we go why? on trips with our patrons like why are you doing this i mean i know why we do vacation yeah man. it's really it's like the we funnest thing ever i'm sometimes <laughs> i'm like this is my job <laughs> but yeah so they're just um they're events with like vendors there's usually like someone doing tattoos piercings we had like hair feathers are back mm-hmm so some, <laughs> oh, yeah. I had those in college, those hair feathers. Um, and going back. <laughs> small business owners like set up little booths. Um, we have medicated drinks and snacks, and like sometimes we'll play a game or we just like end up sitting around chatting and smoking. There's like seven joints going around the circle at once. Um, and people we have become like real, actual, in real life friends, which was like the goal of it. Um, and yeah, you know, I've been sponsored by a couple companies here and there. So just trying to like grow that too, because when I talk about it online, the response is like, 
come here, come there, come like, we want this. Oh, I'm so sad I missed it. Like, and I'm like, yeah, because Instagram didn't show you that it was happening. Mm -hmm. Ugh. So um, those events are amazing because like I've made friends there and like people like return every time and they like see each other there and we've got everyone from like pregnant people to people had like someone had a baby three weeks ago and but like made it her mission to come because there's no social event where it's like acceptable to just chill and smoke weed you know so that's Cannabon's club yeah. that's awesome how often do you have events like that as often as I can it's really hard to find like a venue it's hard to like line that many people up mm -hmm. um so I talk yeah about, it's so much work yeah it's a lot of like a moving, lot. A moving parts that have to like all line up and like work perfectly and then people like you're a mom so it has to line up on like a day people can come and you have to hope that you picked the right day for that or like did grandma gets sick and now you don't have a sitter. So, <laughs> um, I, I just start small and I just, uh, right now I've done them in like backyards or like little events that'll let me smoke, like little venues that'll let me smoke there that don't charge too much because mm -hmm. it costs money to throw these events. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the hard part. Finding a venue that's okay with consuming on premise and, and it's not gonna charge you off the book yeah because you don't want to have it's a reasonable price other people up the butt yeah you want people to come like yeah and, and buy, and buy from the vendors that. and buy from the vendors you want like, yeah yeah exactly right so it's a great atmosphere it's an awesome thing i love it so much it's a lot of work but at the end of the day what were you gonna say, D? At the end of the day? No, that at the end of the day, like you gotta get a little cut too because it's a lot of work that you put into oh, yeah. it, and you know it's like every everything counts. So yeah, yeah I, I struggle with, with that. Events. Yeah, like paying myself and yeah, you know, right. Making a lot of work and time that you're putting into that. Make your ticket like five dollars more, so like I can have that five dollars. <laughs> Something, yeah. But and then you hope that you know it gets enough reach that people want to come to the next one. But yeah, heard, so, girl. Heard, yeah. So I struggle as you learn how it works. Yeah. On top, you're of in the, the same boat. Yeah, on top of the kids, I've got the business, the podcast, and the events. So just trying to make it, man. Your That's fun though. Know. I would love to go visit you in Arizona. It seems like I love a nice it. Place. Arizona is so beautiful. It's so we're like fun. where we are is very flat, and over there there's like that's mountains. true. Yeah, we have mount, uh, there's like a huge mountain out my front door here. That's awesome. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love just <laughs> yeah. that mountains. It feels so magical to be around mount mountains. Speaking of magical, what is uh, how do you feel about psychedelics? So I've started to do like a little bit of microdosing here and there. I took a couple capsules and then I have like this chocolate that like every square is a certain amount. Um, so I yeah, just had some chocolate myself. That's the best way to do it is microdosing it. Yeah, that's yeah. Cause I, I don't know about like tripping yet. That's fun in the right environment at boat. the right time and place. Right. Like I feel like, you didn't miss your boat. <laughs> no, I didn't. didn't no. Well, you tell I mean, me about it then. In the right time and place, <laughs> at the right time and place, there's a time for that. You don't have to go like bananas tripping, but at least like okay. a, like a little bit more than a micro dose. I just okay. feel like it's, it's an experience. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Like I've always done it at like um, either music festivals or out outdoor places. I I like to be outdoors. Okay, I've heard that. Yeah, the outdoors and like listen to good music. I've heard that. I've heard both of those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My friends like you're built for ecstasy. The thing about me though, <laughs> <laughs> whoa! Now friends? we're going to ecstasy. Here we go. <laughs> like Molly, I think she said. Um, I'm oh, already I love so. That. I'm already wow. so like crazy. I don't want to say crazy. Like. I mean, by that, I mean, like, outgoing, extroverted, like, dancing to the music, like, making a fool of myself, like, when I enter any establishment, not caring who's, like, I'm already like that. So people, like, already think that I'm... That you're already... Or, yeah, 
And I'm like, no, this is just the base. This is just the starting point. So like, I don't even know where I could go from there. Who knows? We're ever going to find out. <laughs> if you guys come visit, we'll go to like Sedona and you can. You so can you've never it. done Molly or any? Or no, like literally. That, did, did you hear how goody two shoes I was? <laughs> I've never touched anything. I was always, my friends did it constantly. Like, but I was, to be honest, I was just always dancing. Even in yeah. college, I did like the hip hop team at ASU. So like, I couldn't be. Party? Like, party. I mean, I could, I could get like drunk basically is what, and I could have smoked. I See, just, instead of drinking when I was like young in high school, I was doing E. <laughs> no, I instead of drinking, see, I stayed so far away. I in high school, I thought cannabis was also like bad. I, oh no, I smoked cannabis in high school. Too. Oh, senior year, senior year. That's not too bad. Go so bad. No, no, yeah, I was like thirteen. Well, the first time I tried it, I was I was a freshman. The first time I tried it, but like when I was like using it regularly, I was already a senior, like in high school. Yeah, that's not so I was a late bloomer too. I didn't start did smoking college. until after uh, high like school. You. Yeah, but yeah, you, you were a little bit older than her, like 20, 21? I, uh, I was eighteen when I first oh okay, met so just got out of husband. high school. Yeah, I just, well, okay, so I had a one time where I was in high school and I tried it, but it was like nothing. It was funny because you didn't inhale. Like, no, I was yeah, I was getting high. Right, right. So, and it was so funny because I didn't know how to roll a J. I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. The guy behind me would come in high as hell all the time after lunch. And I'd be like, yo, and he'd be in the best mood. I'd be like, yo, can you hook me up? What's up? <laughs> and then he did, and I didn't know how to do it. And I didn't want to ask him to do it for me because I was lame. You know, he was already getting me the weed. So we, you know, whatever. But officially... That was, I want to say that was like junior year, probably. Okay. Uh, but officially, like, uh, yeah, I was like 18, 19. It was when I first met Robert, who is my husband now. At the time, he was my bro boyfriend, and he was the one that had, but he was oh, the first one. For who, the first time? You know, yeah, exactly. Aww. And now look, you're married. And now look, we have a podcast. My husband and... was the first time <laughs> I out. smoked pot again. Like the I the first time I tried weed, I was a freshman, and then I stopped, and I didn't smoke again until I was a senior. And it was because my husband as well. I smoked yeah. with him. Look at that. We ended up marrying those men. <laughs> Look at that. I still don't oh, look at that. The ones that introduced us to Mary Jane. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was just smoking it, and then when I met my husband, he was like, "We should grow this. It'd be cheaper." Mm -hmm. And that's how this nice. all started because we started off growing. We just started yep. growing, and then that's and how you end up selling it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good man. What is that TikTok sound? What's a TikTok sound? That's a good man. That's a good, that's man. A good man. What was it say? I don't remember. Savannah. 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 Oh, yeah, Savannah. 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 Yeah. Savannah. <laughs> that's, a good man. that's how you know. Lock it down. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, we gotta grow it. Oh, damn. Okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. You know how much you save save so much money. Yeah, yeah for that, real. That's what he does. So yeah, that's great. That's awesome. That's my so, whole life is like basically based off this plant. And in Arizona, it's um medical and recreational, right? Yeah, for yeah. Because you guys recently, recreational has only been a, a couple years. Uh, Really? I feel like maybe... I, I don't know, remember what year it was. Time, like, I, I feel like time it. has just... Yeah. Everything since 2020... I know. Has, I'm like, what? Has felt like one year to me. I agree. <laughs> but I, it feels like... <laughs> no, I, I disagree. This year, 2023, has felt like five years, bro. I feel like I have a. am 80. I turned 80 this year. <laughs> <sighs> well, congrats. I'm so ready for 2024. And then it's like 2023... Oh, oh, the year's almost over. It's blue Here's by. some COVID. I haven't had COVID. I have not had this COVID this COVID. whole time. This is the first time I have gotten COVID. But it was like, hey, we're here. You might as well have some of this before the end of the year. One more thing. One more thing before we wrap this up. COVID. Ah, for real. 
Yeah, that's that's Spotify wrapped. That's my I've had COVID like three fucking times. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, and then it's like we, you get sick, and then it lingers, and then it goes away, and then it comes. You guys back, have been on rotation. One of your kids brings sick. it in. Yo, it like we goes, need to get a despojo. Goes through the house. Get a witch doctor. So, do you have anything uh, more you want to share with our audience? We'll let them know where they can find your podcast and give you them your website and stuff like that. Um. Do you have anything like coming up that you want to like share or anything? Like um, you said, season three might be coming. Yeah, I've recorded about <laughs> four episodes so far, so they're dropping soon. Um, Can of Moms with a Z. Awesome. Um, and I do events. I I'm on other podcasts, so just following along, turning on post notifications, engaging. Mm-hmm. Signing up for my email newsletter on my website, cannabombs.com at the bottom. Yeah, so that would be the best way that they can learn about when you do your next event. Uh, I would say social media. Instagram is my main. I'm like on my stories all the time. I'm like my personal life. I'm, I have all three of my things linked in the can of bombs. And I just basically, that's my home base. And I have other Instagrams linked there as well and the website and all of that. But that's where I do all of my everything from is Can of Bombs. She was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed that interview. Uh, I love seeing her videos. Yeah, uh, her she, videos I see great. her videos back when she was, I mean, this she was a baby because now I see this picture and I'm like, wow, I saw that kid when he was a little tiny baby. And yeah. she would be going to events to sell her her can of bombs with the baby. Mm-hmm. So like it was very empowering to see her out there doing what she does along with her with her kid. That's beautiful. Please follow her at Canna Bombs with a Z. Canna Bombs. Canna Bombs. And for that, we have reached the end of the show. What was it? Where's mm-hmm. the jingle again? <laughs> Time to put your boom away. Oh, it's the end, end of the, the show. show. Right. <laughs> we were always good. late. Yeah. <laughs> Time to put your bombs away. <laughs> oh, oh God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> One day, guys. One day, we'll get get it. it. We got to practice for a while. Sober, probably. I know. (laughs) We've been run through the mud, y'all, from the COVIDs to the too much shrooming and having a good time. (laughs) Hey, thank you guys for sticking around and listening to our madness, our patrons. We love you. We have some still here hanging out with us. While we watch the show, you could pop them in the little (laughs) thing. Are okay with us popping what? them in the little What's boxes down backstage? There. Patrons. Woo! We got an audience <laughs> in the house today. We thank you guys thank in the rotation you. and OG patrons Yanni, Destiny, Lauren, Christy, Peaches, Denise. Oh, sorry, you skipped. I skipped <laughs> wait, one. Wait, wait, Christy, <laughs> Denise, Peaches, Meredith, Natalie, Angelina, Jenny, Catherine, Jay, Jesse, Diane, Gabby, and, and Leslie. Leslie. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Unless you're a patron, we'll see you next week. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.